Morning, everyone. So, uh, got about 20 minutes to talk today. Because I am beholden to the laundry. Everybody puts their pants on one leg at a time. And everybody has to do laundry. I suppose if you don't have to do your own laundry, maybe you can have somebody hold your pants for you while you jump in, but I hate laundry. I hate waiting for that little buzzer on the dryer. And I can't go to work until I have some underwear. And I ran out. And there's my alarm. Ah! But I woke up before my alarm. Um, and I, I read some of the comments on my last video. And, you know, sometimes you, you get a good friend and you don't know if they're trolling you or not. You know, I, I read some uh, comments from Prince Noob Sauce about how I need an art education. And I need... Uh, to think it think about things differently. I don't think so, really. Um, uh, he said, "I don't know the the progression of Jackson Pollock. Um, not outside of an Ed Harris movie, no. Um, and I only watched the Ed Harris movie because it was recommended to me for watching uh, some art documentaries. What I what I can tell you about the height of pretension uh, is that Jackson Pollock is one painter in that style who sells for millions who has influenced a whole bunch of people to think that they can just soak a tennis ball in paint and throw it at a wall and make splatters and make money doing this And it's one of those things where I really do think that a lot of the the followers, the, the people inspired, really do pain over every brush stroke. Even though when, when you look at the forest from the trees there, when you take a step back from what they're doing, it's one big jumble of nothing, right? And that they really do intentionally do these brush strokes. I know a few of these painters myself. Um, Timothy Semple, friend of mine. Uh, he, I, I watched him make some of his art, um, and he, he would be like what some people think Jackson Pollock was. But in the end. Um, the, the, uh, the pretension involved to me is like the, the, the story The Emperor Has No Clothes. And I think it's very easy to, as a skeptic, not appreciate Jackson Pollock at all. Uh, to just see it as a cult of fascination, you know, um, why is Jackson Pollock famous? Because Jackson Pollock is famous. That's it. You know? Um, I see the art in Shepard Fairey and Space Invader and Banksy and the likes. Okay? I see that. And I understand you know, I, I get the art. I don't get the fascination getting to the extremes that it does because there are so many other artists like them. Um, just like I don't get why Jackson Pollock uh, has paintings that have sold for over half a billion while other people who do uh, 
similar if not better work make no money at all. In fact, my problem is that the majority, the vast majority, the 99.999% of people who make art like Jackson Pollock make nothing. But they're inspired by Jackson Pollock to follow a dream of making money with their art and living off of their art. Now, Timothy Semple, he will buy uh, high-quality canvas and high-quality oil paints to the extreme where each one of his paintings with all the spills and splatters and, and whatnot has about $250 worth of paint and materials in it. The canvas alone, 50 bucks, which is outside of my art, uh, $50, I've never sold anything for that, right? He's starting with a ca blank canvas that is worth $50, right? Then, just mounds and mounds of the highest quality paint, all right? the highest quality oil paint that he can get his hands on to where uh, this guy who is a disabled vet is spending most of his fun money <clears throat> if you can call it his fungible uh, fungible money he spends it on paint and I know how many paintings he's sold and he has uh, I believe lifetime he has sold five paintings, each one of which was pretty much at cost, right? So when I see um, a comment from Prince Noob Sauce saying that I need a, an education in art, I think most artists need uh, an education in art business management. And a lot of art schools have become that. I know this, that part of the curriculum of a lot of art schools is how to sell your art and actually get it sold. Um, if needing an art education means that what I really need is to become part of that mindset that artists need to be starving artists in order to be authentic, then no, I don't need an art education. I, I've heard the premise and I rejected it. Um, if you think that because I don't uh, appreciate the art of Jackson Pollock, that I don't understand the progression of his art in uh, his life, then then you're wrong. I see the progression, and I still do not respect it at all. It did get more intricate, okay, towards the end. Um, the way that he numbered things, uh, it reminds me of the show Misfits and how they don't have titles for their episodes. Um, he, d he thought the titles were uh, de detracting from his art and some people would agree but it's funny um, there's more to say about the de facto titles that have been given to Jackson Pollock's art than there is to say about the art itself because it sucks donkey balls. Okay? Um, I'm, I'm happy that during his life he found something to do that he could immerse himself into, but I do not respect it any more than somebody who uh, immerses themselves into World of Warcraft 
and amasses a, a giant load of Warcraft gold. Um, or becomes the first to slay some dragon on any server anywhere. That's... You know, it's fun, but does it really mean anything? No. Um, yesterday, I had someone buy a painting that I did of Felix the Cat. Right? One of my uh, early November paintings. And she was not quite happy with the painting as is because she wanted me to add Felix the Cat, the words, to the bottom of the painting. And I think I did a pretty good job on painting Felix the Cat, and, and I think she thought so too. She just wanted Felix the Cat on the bottom of the painting. Um, her son recently got a black cat and named his black cat Felix because Sylvester had too much white on his chest. So, he named his cat Felix. I guess inspired by cartoons. And I don't know much else about uh, this lady's son. I didn't ask much. But, I imagine if he named his cat Felix the cat, that he can recognize when somebody paints Felix the Cat, and does not need Felix the Cat written out on the bottom of a painting to be able to recognize that it's Felix the Cat. Right? But I painted it anyway. She wanted it, I did it. I sold that motherfucker for ten bucks. Now, here's the breakdown. Um, I'll say that the acrylic paint that I used, which was all black and white, I, I did a little touch-up uh, mostly on the gesso of the pre-gessoed canvas because they, they're never really good quality. Um, but I, I'd say that the, the, the paint was negligible to me, but we could say it was a quarter worth of paint. One quarter of one US dollar. The canvas was purchased uh, at between two dollars and fifty cents and a dollar fifty on a Black Friday special at Michael's, the art store. So between a dollar seventy-five and two seventy-five, I flipped for ten bucks. I did have to spend about thirty minutes painting the original, and about ten minutes to uh, modify with with the uh, the name Felix the Cat on the bottom to make this customer happy. Now. That's actually less than minimum wage that I made there. Um, putting so much time into a piece that uh, it becomes no longer uh, worth it as far as my work is concerned is, is an issue that I've been working on. Uh, there are some pieces that I have sold that took me um, 20 minutes and then I sold for a profit margin of $15 which if you look at that that's like uh, 30 to 45 dollars an hour as a job now, now this is 20 minutes squirting paint to cleaning my paintbrush all the way through so I don't think I need uh, the art education that uh, is is being prescribed, you know. I think I'm I'm 
very close to getting to where artists should be, and that is uh, making people happy, giving people what they want, and doing art as a profession. And when I say that, I mean not as a hobby. If somebody asks what you do, and you say, I'm a painter, what they were really asking was, what do you do to support yourself? More, more likely, especially in American culture. So, if you don't support yourself with the art that you make, and you just collect it, and your house is the gallery that that uh, showcases your art and nobody else wants it you do not have a job you have a hobby this is something that you can hear on uh, the TV show Shark Tank many of you probably don't like it because Mark Cuban is an asshole but it, it's something that some people don't want to hear but they need to okay there's a certain point of making money where you can call something your job instead of your hobby and that point is well above just breaking even you need to get it to the point where you could possibly support something right where you can purchase your own materials again and don't have to go into the hole and then you know buy some amenities for yourself have a, a case of Mountain Dew next to you some food a roof over your head the heat on some lights so that you can paint if you do all of that then you have a job as an artist whatever this art is if not your art has not progressed to that point where you should be calling yourself um, an artist when someone asks what do you do you know maybe you should add a caveat like my hobbies include but right now I'm uh, unemployed and haven't found a way to make my hobbies pay and and for the record here um, Although I have uh, a degree in English, you know, I'm pointing to it right here, my double major bachelor's degree, where one of my majors was English, um, by getting a little bit of money from uh, examiner.com and a couple of blogs that are monetized, that does not make me a writer as far as uh, a profession. That's, that's a hobby. Okay less than a hundred dollars a month right now I make writing at all you know uh, youtuber uh, I believe on one of my uh, Facebook accounts I put as a job videographer at at youtube.com and somebody who hates me uh, took offense at that and um, I'll agree with him I'll, I'll concede that. Uh, it's been a while since he said it, and I'm not even going to say his name to bring up an old fight. But, you know, any little thing that you can point at somebody that you hate, you're going to point out, right? So, uh, same person lo loves to call my market a thrift store, as if it's an insult. Actually, thrift stores have more foot traffic. <laughs> I'll go ahead and insult myself even more. I have uh, a lot of humility about it um, because I'm working on it and I'm trying to crack that nut of marketing. But uh, no, thrift stores are awesome. Uh, there's a Macklemore song about thrift stores now. I wish I could sing that song and have it be, you know, about me and my market. I, I aspire to become a thrift store with my market. Okay, as, as far as uh, the amount of money that gets generated by them. Um, I'll get there one day, but not quite there. So, <laughs> anyways, I put videographer at youtube.com on the Facebook profile of the Facebook account that that uh, 
most of you are friends on if you're friends with me on Facebook. Go ahead and send me a friend request if you haven't. I accept most all of them. In, unless you're a Nigerian princess. Um, so, is that really a profession? You, YouTube videographer? No. Um, I don't know how much I'm supposed to say on a YouTube video about how much money I have made. Uh, but I can tell you that it's only three months between each check that I get. And it, it ebbs and wanes. It, it's one of those things where if you make more videos, you make more money. But uh, I actually give more money to charities on YouTube like uh, right now there's the Thinking Atheist has he had 5 for 5 he started with Doctors Without Borders I love that charity you know sending Christian doctors into Muslim countries because we can you know awesome let's, let's do some more of that uh, sending doctors into countries regardless of whose religion is what you know regardless of whose country is what Awesome. I love that. So, I give more money to little YouTube charities than I make from YouTube. I get my heartstrings pulled so much just being part of this community that the, the little bit of money that I'm making, I put back and then a little bit more. So, it reminds me of a girl that was at a craft fair that was at my market who at around 2.30 p.m. when the craft fair was supposed to end at 6, she started packing up her table because she realized that she had spent way more money than she was going to make that day. She came up to the, the sales till of the, the market where people who are permanent vendors who weren't there at the craft fair uh, they, they would have to have their stuff purchased at, at the till and she was pushing across the desk at me $15 worth of products to purchase and as she's purchasing them she's apologizing to me you know where she should probably should have been apologizing to the event coordinator because it was not my event, it, we were just hosting it, but she's apologizing to me about leaving because she spent more money at the other vendors in the craft fair and in my store than she was going to make, and that she needed to stop herself. It was like she was a shopaholic realizing that she had a problem that was acute. That day. Like, if you can imagine uh, an alcoholic at a bar telling the bartender, dude, um, I'm sorry, but I'm an alcoholic. And I just, I, I just now realize that, and I need to stop right now, and I need to go home, because I'm, I'm getting too drunk, and I'm spending way too much money on alcohol. That's, that's what she did. You know, it was like a self-intervention. And, you know, I continue to make these videos here on YouTube, and I continue to have my heartstrings pulled by something like a DevShell AIDS charity benefit thing. And, you know, I, I guess it hasn't become that, that big of a problem, but I do... Uh, I give more than I get. Uh, just a little bit more. You know, I, I'd say at the end of the year, added up maybe 10, 20 bucks more than I what I made. So, can I call being a videographer a profession? No, because there's nothing left over for supporting anything other than the, the charities that I run into when I do the shit. Just like there's painters who don't make enough money to cover the materials 
for their art. Okay? And I, and I know that there's going to be some people that will down thumb this and think, uh, well, money isn't everything. And everybody is special. And, you know, you're, you're shitting on people that don't sell their art when they're great artists and they, they should be respected for the content of their art. Um, no, I'm sorry. I run a market. Okay? And in, in the core of my being, I know that um, there's a something wrong with my country something wrong going on um, and it does have to do with every kid getting a trophy and it does have to do with uh, people thinking that things need respect when they don't need the respect that, that people are requesting for them um, and I, I really wish that before people set up a little bubble where they live in, or, or a bubble where they enjoy their time, they at least spend a little bit of time doing shit they don't want to do in order to make money. Okay? In order to support those bubbles. Because every one of those bubbles in the world is supported by someone who made money. Every one of them. We are on a medium right now where, you know, in order to host the hours and fucking hours of me talking, Google had to invest bajillions of dollars. I don't even know how much, right? This would not exist if it all had to be for free. You know, if nobody had some business sense, right? Kazoom is going to tell people that he does not like Google making money so he, he took the, the ads off of his videos it doesn't make him feel good anymore you know, to have ads on his videos me, I know that my cut from those ads pays for a good portion of the charity that I give to plus Google this nice service for, from YouTube that I use is making some money off of me right and probably at a loss okay they're they're hosting the these these vast amounts of information all of these videos and it, there's a lot of people who don't even realize that, that that playground that we all have here cost money somebody had to build the fucking playground somebody has to maintain the fucking playground. Okay? And we'd all have a lot more fun in our playgrounds if some people got up off their asses and spent a little bit of time doing shit that they don't want to do instead of thinking, oh, well, you know, life isn't all about money and we should all have time for families and stuff and, you know, that time needs to be, you know, a, th this amount of time and if you only have you know, five or six hours out of the, the, the evening, you know, for family time, that, then you're losing the rest of your life, and, you know, we, we can all just, if we all just do what we like, the money will follow. <laughs> yeah. That is what's wrong with uh, the country right now. If we all just get an education then we can all have really great jobs. You know, the problem with the country is that we don't have enough people who are educated. No, the problem with the country is we don't have enough people who are willing to take half the time out of their day to clean fucking toilets and be a plumber. You know, the problem with the country is that there's fucking three million jobs that are unfilled because no one wants to fucking do them. Now there's 12 million people unemployed. There's three million jobs that are still unfucking filled because nobody wants to do things that aren't 
in line with their fucking degree. All right? I've got two majors in that degree on the wall there that I'm not doing anything with, unless you want to count uh, organizing a market as some sort of uh, behaviorism study, like I treat it. <laughs> you know, some uh, organizational environmental psychology. And let, but but that's a that's a stretch, okay? Um, I, I'm a journeyman wireman. You know, in an electrician's union, that that in and of itself, I should be using that to make money, right? Um, and I do love doing it, but there's no call for it in in my local right now. So nothing that I'm doing in order to make money has anything to do with my education. In fact. If you are only educated in the things that, that you think are going to make money, then you probably lost focus uh, on, on the importance of education. I enjoyed reading and writing in order to get my, my, my English major. I did it because it was something I enjoyed, not because I, I wanted to be a writer at all. Um, I write technical manuals for some of the things that that go on in the endeavors that I do and I know the value of research in everything else that I do and that's what I take with me but um, really if, if you only get educated to make money that, then there's something about education that, that you're missing find something that that you that you like that has nothing to do with making money and and go read about it in your free time that that'll enrich your life but earn that free time okay make sure that you are the one that paid for your ability to sit in in your little private study that might just be a couple bookshelves behind you you know Make sure that you you're not the drain, okay. Make sure that your part of the sandbox is something that you contributed to. At least give it a try, you know. And I just feel like uh, I'm I'm at odds with most artists. I'm gonna throw that up there uh, with air quotes because what I mean by that is art hobbyists. I, I'm at odds with them because um, I want the world to work a, as a cohesive unit, and I don't mean like work like employment. I mean like work like at all, like operate, <laughs> like. I don't want everything to come to a grinding fucking standstill because nobody wants to do anything to keep the playground alive. You know? So, I'm going to continue uh, doing the art that sells in order to continue to fund my market. Um, th those funds go right back into the operating funds of my market. And sometimes there are artists that are of the complete, utter opposite mindset of me that will enjoy some of the amenities of my market. And it will be on the backbone of me selling Felix the Cat. Okay? It will be on the backbone of me doing whatever the customer wanted. And I hope they appreciate it. 